Yo, what is up? Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, how are you guys doing anyway? <laughs> oh wait, you can't respond to a video. <laughs> anyway, uh, I wanted to, before the video starts, I wanted to appreciate all of you guys that helped me do this series. It's been fun and you guys, you've been really supportive and I want to thank you for that. Man. It's been amazing, you know. So, this is just a small appreciation to everybody that has it's not just me alone you know but let's carry on in with the video so this is a strike that never happened and it continues so we know this didn't happen obviously nothing like this happened this is just them imagining that they burnt the school and for that reason i think that's why they ran back to doms maybe it was like a safe heaven i don't know why they decided it was specifically the dorms but yeah kudos to them <laughs> they tried it so they ran back to dorms but they didn't realize one thing but of course it was late and dorms were locked so they were wondering what they're going to do and their, f their first thought i believe was to knock on the door so one of them decided hey i'm going to do this risk it they were taking risks like i always say take risks <laughs> so they took the risk and knocked on the door suddenly something happened and all of a sudden mother opened the door the house mother that is so they had a back and forth house mother was wondering why they are out at this time they were arguing 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 but these guys forgot something that someone saw them and that was where the weakness started so this is exactly what happened to their surprise someone came from behind running of course it was a watchman he came from behind running after them realizing what they had tried to do and tried to stop them and all of a sudden he was there protecting mother then from these guys because well you don't know what they could do they tried to burn the school so in the process if you look closely mother is on phone trying to call someone she is trying to get the phone to someone and who could that be the one and only one and only principal obviously so of course he caught up with them and he was so furious i think he blew up at that point <laughs> anyway so this is what happened the next morning everything s went on as well people had breakfast there was parade things were normal in fact you probably wouldn't have realized that the school was was in was somehow in danger because people had tried to burn it and people were just acting like well it's normal uh, because i think they didn't know what had happened but to some extent they realized something three people were missing and the funny thing is they were nowhere to be found their beds were well made so that means they didn't go back to sleep so where could these guys be where could have these guys gone even their classmates to be specific were wondering where are these three guys I mean they are always here but where are they? Well, I'm going to explain to you. You see, the principal didn't let them sleep there last night. They slept in a cell because what they had commit what they were trying to commit was an actual crime. You know, arson, you, you could get jail for it. Yeah. So sadly, they ended up in a cell that whole night. <laughs> I was, I, was, I was seated here thinking it must be tough for them you know because you're in a cell you're pretty much locked I don't know I don't know how you can survive even in like a small space for hours I think I have a phobia for small spaces <laughs> and anybody who has that I think you know how scary it is to be in like a confined place 
Now they were seated there arguing, wondering whose fault it is, who did what, but to be honest, this was a plan set for failure in the first place because there was there was no structure and they were just all over the place. So anyway, so all of a sudden exotic cars started pulling into the compound. One by one by one by one. And you can guess who are these exotic cars for? I'll give you one second to just guess who was being dropped by these exotic cars. Of course, it's the boys. <laughs> Their parents bailed them out. I mean, who else? You know, Juja, they always have, well, let's say parents who can feed you out of the pocket. <laughs> Anyway, so when they came back to school in parade, they were assembled in front and banished and made to look like fools <laughs> by the principal and the administrator. In fact, I remember that day she was so pissed, <laughs> she just literally didn't even attend the parade. Or maybe they, sh I think she did for a little bit, I can't really remember. Anyway, what what happened to them in the end? They got expelled and that was it. They were even lucky that the school didn't press charges for us. But of course, you know, you know this school likes to keep a good name. So that is the end of part one of this story. So we move on to part two and the girls who were saved by a toilet. Let's go on with this story. This story involves a good friend of mine and that's why I like it. <laughs> anyway, so it was sometime in a normal night preps. Everybody is used to making noise during night preps, obviously. I mean, who isn't? Who isn't you know, everybody is just usually chillaxed. On a Friday night preps, nobody really cares about reading, about doing things, you know. So you wouldn't expect that anything suspicious would happen, except this is going to be a different Friday night. This one was unlike the others, it was very special and I think my friend knows why, <laughs> you know. So all of a sudden the class became empty and whenever this happens, usually either guys have gone to sleep or a teacher has appeared and I can tell you for a fact that it's the second option so what could have happened here well I'll give you a second to look again you see in the class what you didn't not what you didn't notice that there was a teacher standing there obviously and he was just looking at them and this whole time, nobody had realized except for one person. And that one person finally told them, Hey guys, there's a teacher here, please. <laughs> Let's save ourselves. And he just stood there the whole time. I don't like when teachers do that. It was creepy. Sindio, right? Or maybe I'm the only one who is assuming. So, anyway. He enters. And he forces everybody out except the members of the class. And he forces the rest to lie down in a basketball court while he's busy looking for others who have hidden under the desk and he used to always say can you lie down can I lie down well in that kind of accent <laughs> it was quite funny you know. so there's there's as they were in the basketball court all of them doing the punishments or waiting to be punished there were two people that missed and I can't wait for you to guess or think or maybe you can't guess I can't wait to tell you who it was well <laughs> let's find out <laughs> you see some two girls hid in the bathroom and or as we would say toilet <laughs> yeah so they hid in the toilet because obviously they were avoiding this punishment and oh boy oh boy <laughs> I I would wonder who it was you know so 
I can't wait for you guys to see who it was. They hid in the toilet this whole time just to avoid the punishment. Amazing, right? So, the identity. Here goes the identity. Are you ready? Of course. It was my good friend, Maya. <laughs> yeah, she is hiding in the toilet. I don't know how, but yeah, she did. See how they even have Moshene in the bathroom. I don't know what they were talking about there. But anyway, while these guys were busy hiding in the bathroom, these guys were being punished. As in they were literally on the floor. And you can see that huge stick that they were using. That's an actual thing they would <laughs> try and use to beat us. So this is pretty accurate to some degree, you know. So as he was punishing them, these two girls were actually in, in the bathroom just waiting. So, well, they just waited and escaped slowly outside. And for a fact, I know this, that they, that they of course escaped without being, un being detected. No, I think somehow they got away with it. Or so that's what we think. Maybe they didn't. Who knows? <laughs> uh, okay, let me explain to you exactly what happened. So, of course, the teacher remembered. Hey, these guys weren't there. So, next day, he told them. Were you really there? And, well, I'll just let Maya explain it. The next day, the teacher came to ask, like, why are you really at the basketball court yesterday? And I'm like, yeah, you didn't see me. I was like at the edge. What are you talking about? Yep. Thanks, Maya. Anyway, this is the next story. Uh, the story of the 007s. So, you remember how about the tough punishments that we used to be given and that we never really liked them? <laughs> so, at this point, I was tired of bucks. I was tired of being chiseled and being ripped all the time so decided I was going to do something so me so what happened is assembled a group and that group contained Alan, Gisheru and of course me I don't know why I was doing push-ups but I will continue that story on the next episode of The Untold this has been Ray and uh it's been fun i hope to see you next time on for part three yeah the next will be will be covered on part three. Oh, and i always hear guys asking me um what happened to all the guys you were close to what happened to some of them and especially <laughs> the Females, I don't know why you want to know this, but I'll also cover this too. <laughs> yeah, all right, I'll cover this too because apparently you guys want to know. But for your own knowledge, <laughs> uh, my deskmate, my deskmate back in high school is still alive, this geezer there is still alive. And yeah, they're all living good lives. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Peace out. Inshallah, Visca, or whatever you say. Katleba in India. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, see you next time. Ha!